Welcome back, nerds. In this video, I'm going to teach you some expert level tweaks and how to tune ESET products to take your security up to the next level. Now for the purpose of this video, I am going to be using ESET Small Business Security. Now don't worry if you have a different version. The settings and tweaks that we're going to do are the same in all the other products for home security and small business except NOD32. If you have the very basic old NOD32, then some of the things that we're going to be talking about aren't even in that version. But if you don't have NOD32 and you have either one of the small business security or the home security line like ESET Ultimate, Premium, ESET essential, then you're going to be just fine. Anyway, let's get started. Now to get started, we're going to have to go over to the left and click setup right here. It's going to pull up this menu. We have all the sections that we need to cover. The first thing we need to cover is computer protection. And in here we have lots of things going on. Everything as default should be okay, except device control might not be enabled. You'll want to enable that. What device control is, is it's going to protect your device from USB types of threats such as printers, Bluetooth devices, and USB flash drives. A very common form of attack would be like a rubber ducky or an infected uh, INF or auto run uh, and other types of firmware attacks through USB. Turning this on is going to make it to where if I plug in a USB flash drive, a pop-up's gonna coming up saying, whoa, what do you wanna do with this new device? Do you wanna scan it for infections? And if you click to do nothing or to not scan it, it'll allow it. You can also scan it first and allow it. But what's more important is you can actually go in here and tweak the exact types of behavior. So we can create rules for different types of devices such as flash drives, USB printers, modems, imaging, um, or all devices. And you can create a specific rule or behavior. So let's assume that you don't want any types of USB devices to be able to run rampant on your system and maybe you're really paranoid or you have a specific type of threat, that could be something to lock down. Especially, what if it was a kiosk? If this computer was in a public lobby and you wanted people to use it to sign in, but you didn't want some smart little hacker to come in and plug in a USB device and hijack the kiosk. So you might be able to lock, you can use this to lock down USB threats. Matter of fact, in the rules section, if you click edit on the rules, you can click the populate button and it will show all the devices that are connected to your computer, such as all the printers, any Bluetooth devices, and you can click on one, click OK, and then you can add a specific rule for that device. So you don't actually have to know by heart what devices you have connected to your machine. You can just populate and it'll show you everything that's detected by your computer. So that's a good thing to go through depending on your specific use case. Now in the webcam protection, this should also be on. Webcam protection is going to prevent your webcam from being turned on by some kind of malicious program or a hacker or another kind of intruder. So essentially when you have webcam protection turned on, whenever Discord or Teams or Skype opens up the webcam for the first time, ESET's going to say, hey, this program called whatever is trying to access your webcam. Do you want to allow it? If you click yes, it will automatically add a rule saying that Skype is okay. And this is very good because one of the most common attacks by malware and intruders is to flip on the webcam. So definitely want to lock that down. By the way, if you're watching this video and you don't even have ESET but you'd like to get on it, I have the latest discount links in the description. All right, back in the computer protection section, what we've activated so far is device control and webcam protection. Now everything else here that you have should be activated by default, but up here on real-time file system protection, this is what's scanning all the time in the background in case something happens in between your normal periodic scans. So it's also part of the machine learning or the AI of ESET that's protecting you. And if we go over here to the cog wheel, there's a couple of settings I wanna show you. Now everything here I have as default and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go to the threat sense section. And here we're already scanning boot sectors and UEFI, which is one of the things that only ESET does for the most part. There may be someone out there that I'm not aware of, but they're actually looking for motherboard infections for you. 
But what's not checked here is runtime packers. And this is actually going to scan executable files that are unpacked in the memory upon execution. So a lot of things that aren't necessarily an executable, but are running from memory. This is also a good way to detect threats running in RAM disks, really high level threats. That's good to turn on. Now heuristics by default is turned on for me. If it's not, turn it on. And then at advanced heuristics and DNA signatures, this is a big one here. This one is great if you want a more sensitive engine. Now turning this on may result in more false positives. So again, this is for advanced users. This may alert on things that aren't necessarily malicious, but maybe violate some privacy policies of ESET. If you start getting a lot of false positives, go ahead and switch this off. But if you're trying to increase your security, go ahead and allow advanced heuristics and DNA signatures. It does increase security. Now we can go up to the top left here to protections and click that. Now this is how we can tune the machine learning of, of your ESET product. By default, there's an AI that gets better at protecting your system over time. And we can tune exactly how that works. By default, it's gonna be balanced for the most part. And during the setup, you were asked if you wanted to detect potentially unsafe applications or pups. Mine is off. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch that to balanced. I don't want it too much, but that's just for the reporting section. I Sometimes I do want things that maybe ESET considers as potentially unsafe, but I want to make the decision. I do want it to be balanced for the reporting, but for protection, I have it off. So it will let me know that it has detected something that it believes is unsafe, but it's going to leave it up to me whether or not it removes it. It will not do it automatically. Suspicious applications, we can, on all these sections, we can decide whether to report it aggressively and also to automatically protect us aggressively or cautious. <clears throat> cautious is gonna mean it's not really gonna detect unless it's absolutely certain. Balanced is a bit more on the careful side. Aggressive, it's gonna be almost too sensitive, maybe even too sensitive. But on malware detections, I like to turn it to aggressive reporting, but I leave the protection on balanced because I don't want it automatically deleting and quarantining everything it detects. I want to have some control over that. Potentially unwanted applications, I'm going to go ahead and leave that as balanced. You can go ahead and adjust it to aggressive if you're having a lot of problems with that. And then suspicious applications, these tend to be things that are violating privacy. Um, they're breaking some kind of rule, but they're not malware technically you can adjust this one to aggressive if you want but again i'm not a fan of putting the protection on aggressive because then every time it detects a something that's not malicious and alerts on it it's going to delete it and you're going to have to go hunt through the logs to find out what it did and you might not notice okay after you're done with this section go ahead and click this ok button and then it has adjusted our settings the next section we're going to tweak is internet protection. And you guys are going to love this one because a lot of you guys might not be aware of what you can do with this section. Most people leave everything here enabled, but they don't tune anything here. Under web access protection, we can go under URL list management, and then we can add block lists. We can add a list of malicious domains that we download online and then completely block them from this computer. So if you guys don't already have a pie hole or a local DNS or other ways to block m massive lists of malware domains, basically, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we can make it to where our computer can't access malicious domains that are designed to hack us or communicate with malware. So it's very important that our computer not be able to communicate with these types of sites. We can add lists and guess what? Your boy Nico has one for you right here. I'm going to give you a link to this. This is one of many lists that you can get online. Uh, you can literally just search for uh, malware domain lists. And this one's off of GitHub. And this is just a huge list of known malicious domains that are either scams to infect you or they communicate with viruses that may be on your system. And you're just going to go over here and click download raw file. And it will give me this list. And I'm just going to do edit select all, copy, and then in ESET, I'm gonna add a list. Um, found malware is ignored. We're gonna block here, and this is gonna be malware domains, but you can name it whatever you want. List of malicious domains, this is just for mine. 
and then I'm gonna, you can go ahead and click notify when applying. So whenever this list actually works and it blocks a, a malicious domain, it's gonna notify you that that website was on your list. And that's pretty important because what if you imported every list on the internet and maybe one of the lists is wrong and it's blocking a website that's okay and you need to go there, at least you'll know what's alerting to it and where to go. So now I'm gonna go click add right here. I'm gonna enter multiple values and then I'm gonna copy and paste that. So I pasted everything from this text file right into here. And then I'm gonna click OK. This may take a minute because it's a big list. All right, then I'm gonna click OK. Bada bing, this malware list is a list of blocked domains. Every malicious domain on this massive list I downloaded of known malicious domains are now blocked to this computer. That means that my, my browser can't go there. And also if it's trying to talk to any kind of malware on my computer, it's blocked off. It's not able to talk to me. This bad list of domains is not able to do business on my computer. So I've essentially done what adding a malware list to a pie hole with ESET. That's a really cool feature. Then I can go ahead and click OK. And finally, we need to tweak network protection. And you're gonna like this one. We of course have firewall, network attack protection, and botnet protection. Make sure that everything here is turned on. Never turn off botnet protection. I can understand why you might wanna turn off these, but botnet protection is literally detecting malware or other types of communications either on your computer or an infected system on your network that's trying to maybe uh, do a, a, a lateral attack um, like an infected network trojan from another computer trying to infect your machine you want to know about that so never turn this one off under firewall of course we're going to tweak some settings in here now I know you guys are wanting me to add a whole bunch of firewall rules. I don't like to do that because every time we turn something off, something doesn't work. And if I turn off port 443, for example, might be a good idea for my network. If you have any kind of Cisco related communication or need to log into a Cisco router, you're blocking the port that allows you to talk to the router. So I don't like to add a whole bunch of rules, but you can if you have a specific use case. Click add and then you can go here by application, direction, IP protocol. For example, I know a lot of you guys are going to want to block um, ICMP so that you can become a little bit stealth on the network, but you don't have to do that. As is, the firewall on ESET is pretty hardened in that it's blocking unsolicited. So what that means is, is if I'm not communicating to CNN.com with my browser, CNN.com is not allowed to send me its website because it's unsolicited. However, if I open up Chrome and then hit CNN.com, I'm soliciting CNN.com servers and they're allowed to send me that website. So by default, it's actually pretty good unless you have a specific use case. But let's assume you want to add rules and you want to block certain kinds of traffic or allow certain types of traffic, but you don't know how to add rules. You don't have to, no. You can go here to filtering mode and switch from the default automatic to interactive. Now, if you click OK here, every single communication in and out of your computer is gonna have a pop-up in ESET saying, Firefox wants to communicate out to the internet. Microsoft wants to communicate to Windows Update. And you're gonna click yes or no to every little thing. And it's gonna be a busy few minutes. And every single thing decision you do there will be a rule. So when you click yes to something, it's a rule allowing it. When you click no, it'll be a rule blocking it. So that's a good way to build a whole mess of rules to tailor and shape the traffic of your computer without having to add a rule at all. So that's actually more effective in my opinion than going in and adding a whole bunch of rules unless I have a specific use case. So that's what would be interactive. Once you're done with that busy mess and you got enough rules that you're happy with, switch it back to automatic and it's now going to use your rules and it's not gonna notify you every time there's a communication. Your work is done. Next thing we can go is network attack protection. A lot of things we can do here, IDS rules. This is gonna be for automatic detection of intrusions. We can also add things here and we can go to in and out. This can be any kind of, of, um, of detection. A cool thing you can do is you can you can uh, do specific for RPC, UDP port scanning attack. So I like to add TCP port scanning attack, in or out, application any, and I want it to block, and I want it to notify 
and yes i want it to log what this is going to do is it's going to let me know if there's anyone on my network or any other way penetrated my firewall and is scanning my computer for vulnerabilities such as open ports i want to know about that so then i click ok now i'm automatically looking for tcp port scanning attacks i can add others now if you leave it by default the settings are pretty good they're not overly sensitive but I specifically want to know if there's a hacker I'm in on my network scanning my computer for open ports. This will also let me know if my honeypot on my network is working. If you're an advanced user, then you know what I'm talking about. Now there's other types of attacks that I also want my firewall to be cognizant of, but I don't have to do it at the firewall level because my IDS can handle it. If I go down here to advanced options and then intrusion detection system, I can actually check protocol SMB, RPC, and RDP. So if you are worried about me not blocking RDP, I may use remote desktop protocol and I do use protocol SMB. I don't want to block it on my network because I got a ton of NAS servers that I access over protocol SMB. I only want to worry about malicious usage of SMB, RPC, R and RDP. Then I'm also, I'm scanning for ARP, and then also we have the scan set right here. It wasn't set to notify me, which is why I added the rule. But even if I didn't add that, under intrusion detection system, it's already switched on. It's already looking at SMB, RPC, RDP, ARP, and then both port scanning attacks. And then it's blocking unsafe address after detection. And then I can also, this one by default will not be turned on. This is one that I like to turn on. Notify about incoming attacks against security holes. This is going to make you a bit ahead of the curve on security vulnerabilities. Under packet inspection, we can say, allow incoming connection to admin shares in SMB protocol. I don't have that. By default, this is turned on. I switched it off and I think you should too. But you can go through here and a lot of this stuff might be controlled by group policy for a lot of you guys that are IT. But you can make it very specific to this computer with the use of uh, with the use of ESET. Some of you guys might be turning off connection to a remote registry service. I don't, but you can. This is something that you should go through, and this allows you to control a lot of traffic by using the IDS feature rather than adding rules because we're allowing AI to do what AI does best, which is hopefully to be smarter. And that is essentially all that I would change. And congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please smash that like button and consider subscribing. And I shall see you next time.